This is all one family, right? For one intention. Which is the intention? The longest name, huh? Wow. Is that here? Okay, happy birthday. Okay. Today I consider this the hardest Sunday to preach in the whole year, the Blessed Trinity. Because, quite frankly, it, it's, it's, it really is a mystery. And it's not like a, a mystery movie that you're going to solve it. You find out enough facts and then you can prove it. Religious mystery or spiritual mystery is something that we observe but don't quite get it exactly, but we harmonize with it, we, we understand on some levels, but we don't ever fully, completely figure it out. And maybe because there really is no way to figure it out. I mean, listen to our definition of the Trinity. One God, three persons in one God. What does that mean? Three persons in one God. There was a heresy that happened in the early centuries called the modalist. And the modalist believed this. They spoke of God as the Father is creator, the Son is redeemer, and the Holy Spirit sanctifier. They spoke of only one God, as I, as I recall, but they talked about these modalities or these ways that God functioned in three different ways. But that's not what the mystery of the Trinity says. In fact, you'll hear it in the preface a couple times, and we talk about one substance, but three persons in that one substance. And I frankly don't know what that means. I mean, I know what the words mean, but I don't know the reality. But I don't know a lot of things. For example, every time I flick on a switch in electricity, the light comes on. I know it's going to come on. I know it's coming on because I flicked the switch. But that's not why. That was just the final way to release that energy and power to light the light. I couldn't explain it to you, but I'm sure there are many people here who are electricians who understand it very well. But, you know, even when we say we understand it, because we can observe it and measure it, you know, that, that still lacks uh, some of the understanding. For example, I know as a matter of fact, because I've read it, and uh, that's the only reason I believe the scientists who tell me this. And you've heard me say this 1,000 times, so this is 1,001, okay? The light and sun that is right here, right now, That left the sun eight minutes ago. That, that heat I'm feeling, I feel the heat, and the light that's right in my face, that left the sun eight minutes ago and traveled here. And light is, and heat are always traveling. Travels at 186,000 miles per second. So they've measured it. I get it. And it's only 93 million miles away. They've measured it. I get it. But I don't understand it. I mean, to me, that's just mysterious and, and wonderful, part of the, the art of creation. Do you know that they have little cameras they can put in your body to observe all kinds of things, blood flow and all kinds of things, and, and where there's damage in the heart? They can even put a tiny, tiny camera in to notice and record the moment of conception when the sperm and the egg connect. They can see it. They can measure things in time and, and distances and sizes. And, but just because you can describe it doesn't necessarily mean that you get the mystery. I think life is just a mystery. It's just a mystery that we get to live and enjoy and celebrate and understand on some levels. But hmm, how many years in this life? How, 84? Yeah, that's... A, you beat me by 12 years, okay? So, it's just a wonderful mystery. So, what do we say? There's some things that we believe about the Trinity that have been there forever. Over 4,000 years ago, when Abraham believed in this God, the Jews believed it for 2,000 years. Jesus was born. He was a Jew. And he never, ever countered it or disagreed with it. And 2,000 years later, here we are, and we still say there's only one God. We believe that. One God. But we believe this God is, is, is this mysterious three persons that, that in a kind of a modalist way does some things that one does and the other doesn't. For example, we don't say God our Father is hanging on the, was hanging on the cross. We say Jesus the Son. And Jesus didn't send him back, himself back to the earth. Afterward, sent the Spirit. So we identify these different 
distinct things. And, and the, 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 the preface will say they're one substance, but three persons equal in majesty. Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier. These are three amazing things that God does in our life. And for me, it probably is not a very good description, but it, it makes sense to me. I think of uh, on television sometimes they'll, they'll do these little scientific things and they'll, they'll show you like a diagram that's a moving diagram of an atom. And I probably got it wrong, but I think there's an electron, a proton, and a neutron. And these things are just moving constantly, just just rapidly. I don't know the speed, but I'm sure they've measured that too. And my body is made up of millions, I guess, of atoms. It's, it's one of the tiniest particles of matter. I think there's something uh, tinier, but I can't remember the name, but, but this is tiny. You can't see it with the naked eye. And when I think of the Trinity, I think of pure love for one another, this God. Pure energy. Just always, it's energy. And that from this, from this spiritual reality that is like in some way an atom, that this God is loving Father, Son, and Spirit all the time. And in fact, you know, the historical moment in time when we came to believe in Trinity, I don't know it exactly, but the earliest description of it that I can think of is at the end of Matthew's gospel when Jesus makes his speech, which I suspect was tacked on years later, but he says to the disciples before he sends, go out into the world and announce the good news and baptize everyone in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's the formula right there. That's the formula. But it really doesn't develop in any way in Luke or, or even in Matthew, but in John first chapter alone, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, talking about Jesus, the Word. The Word took on human flesh and dwelt among us, and the Spirit was sent. We heard it today, that I will send the Spirit, and He'll give everything you need, because He'll take from me what I give Him, and what is mine is the Father's. And, and this, this description of these three persons equal in majesty Loving, just loving. So John, in his first letter, way at the end of the Scriptures, one of the last three books, I believe, he says, God is love. Not God loves, not God did love, will love, is about to love. God is love. God is love. And what that says to me, in the most literal way, is that this is pure love that just exists. And, and this is what we describe as God, Father, Son, and Spirit, who, who was creative and redemptive and sanctifying. And having said all of that, if you said to me, well, explain it further, I'd say, I'm out. I'm out of words. I don't know how to explain it further. But, again, I think the mystery is a mystery. I don't think it's explainable. And I think... There's nothing wrong with coming before a mystery that we can appreciate, that we can love, that we can accept without being able to explain it completely. We don't know everything. And in fact, the wonderful scientists say, for everything we learn, we learn there's 10 things we don't know. And they keep saying it. It's like they're never going to learn, or they keep learning, but there's always, 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 always more. So today as we come to this mystery, I like to see it in a further way as this. We know what it means to belong to the human family, the mortal family, the flesh, this stuff. But what we get introduced to by our God is to come into the immortal family. And this, again, a mystery that we will rise and live forever with our God. About three years ago, I went to a talk down at the uh, convention center in L.A. It was, uh, it was all these civic people were invited. It was a big, big thing. And this man got up, and uh, I guess I had heard this before, but I never heard it quite so clearly as he said this. He said, all the matter that is in the world has been here and will be here. It doesn't, even when it burns up or it evaporates, you, it's gone? No. 
it's, it's transformed into a different kind of matter. So we are, in the words of this man, I read this many times from spiritual writers, I am centuries old. I'm not talking about reincarnation. I'm talking about the matter that makes me up. And when I go back into the ground and I, uh, the worms eat me or whatever they do, and then, and then whatever happens, that that matter still exists in another form. Again, a wonderful mystery. So, as we come before all of this, we either, I guess, have a, just a couple of choices. We say, you can't explain it, I won't believe it, forget it. Or, wow, I can't explain it, but somehow I connect with this so deeply, and it's transformative for me, transformative. And maybe that's because, in the end, if we truly see that God is love, to simply accept that, to let that come into us, is enough to transform and to give life. Now, why this?